All right, we're all set. We're visiting with uh, head coach of the uh, New England Sweep, uh, Arizona State Sun Devils, Greg Powers. Greg, uh, welcome to the show as always. And tell me a little bit about that trip out east. It was a week out there, and you guys uh, had some great results. Yeah, it was good. It was good to come together. We thought that uh, Tuesday's win against AIC, as crazy as it sounds, we we, we didn't play well. Right. Um, and in AIC's defense, I don't think they played very well either, according to their coach. And the, what we saw on film with them um, was certainly uh, really impressive. I think they've got a good thing going there. Um, but you, you can't complain. At this stage of our program, any win's a good win, no matter how you get it. So we took it um, knowing we could play a lot better than we did and a lot cleaner. Uh, it was the first game uh, back after like a 12-day layoff. Right. So things were a little bit sloppy. But um, then we went into to Amherst and played UMass on Friday and Saturday and Friday played played a pretty complete game and beat them 4-1, had a ton of big saves by by Rob and then and Saturday um, probably was was as clean defensively of a game as, as we can play. I, I don't think they they had more than two scoring chances the entire game and and Rob made some big saves and obviously in the scoring chances they did have and we pulled away. So to go on the road and win three in a row and two on the road against the Hockey East team in our first full year is something we uh, we plan to build off of. So you guys have to feel pretty comfortable out East now. I mean, you guys have been out there enough times over yeah. the last couple of years. So what are those road trips like? The guys seem to be comfortable with being out there. And you know, other than the flight, it's not it's not that bad. Right. You know, I mean, and this one was was somewhat easy because they were done with exams. Um, all we did was go out, focus on hockey. You know, right. and and I think that that played to our advantage. Some UMass still had exams, but um so it, you know it, it was it was good i think our guys are used to it we're used to the travel we haven't from day one used travel as an excuse and we won't where we are where we are geographically and to be successful it's just going to be something that we have to deal with you guys got joey rats back and i'm sure he was a big help to the defensive core yeah he was huge especially against aic his first game back and two monster assists um they weren't just you know fluke assists they were they were big time plays that he made that led to the second and third goal to, to, to get that win. So he he put us on his back. His first came back there and found a way to, to get it done. And then he was really steady against UMass and, and did some good things. So it was good to have him back and get another right shot back on the, the back end. How about David Norris and the way he played as well for you? He had a, a well, nice honor that just came out today. Yeah, right? yeah. First time we've had an NCAA Player of the Week, so that was huge for, for Nori. Um, really happy for him to go back where he – he started his college career and to get the game winner in the third period against his old team, I think he was he was thrilled and, and we were we were happy and proud of him. Um, and then he had a great great game uh, or two games against UMass, you know, and he picked right. up a few more assists. So he's starting to play and um, and and really compete and be hard on pucks and um, transform his game and 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 kind of overcome some deficiencies that he had early in the season. And, and he looks great right now. You and I talked last week about the uh, student athlete part of it, and you guys also had the announcement about your uh, baller scholars that came out. Mm -hmm. So, talk a little bit about again, just to refresh everybody as to how important that is to have not only good athletes but good student athletes. It's everything. I mean, we, we we don't we don't ask for it; we demand it. You know, I mean, with all the resources that Sun Devil Athletics gives our guys, um, you have to try and fail, right. and and so you know, with the resources that that we we give our guys and and. Everything that they that they they come here to do academics is 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 the top priority, and um, we've always treated it that way. We'll continue to, and and I think the proof's in the pudding. It's a controllable right now that those guys are, are in complete control of how they do academically. They're not always in control of how they do on the ice. You know, at this stage of our program, there's a lot of uncontrollables. You know, I, it could be a decision I could make. It could be anything. But academically, they're in control of everything, and um, and we're really proud of them because a 3.45 GPA and um, you know 23 guys over 3.0, two 4.0s, um, highest GPA in, in the building. We're really proud of that. So tell me, as a coach right now, how, how difficult is it for you to put a lineup out there every day? The competition that you guys have right now is is pretty darn good. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, I can't I can't really pinpoint one guy on any given night and say they don't deserve to play right you know and um so it's tough it's all part of it you know and it's part of continuing to develop a, a really good positive culture in our locker room and 
uh, one between players and staff that, that there's no animosity and um, we try to communicate and, and, and make guys understand. And, you know, a perfect example is Drew Newmeyer. He's been playing great. And on right. Saturday I took him out and put Eddie McGovern in because Eddie was serving a, a two-game DQ suspension from the Colgate series. And so wanted to get fresh legs in and, and, uh, and knew he being a senior – he, he just gets it. You know, he understands right. that, that sometimes there's going to be games where we want to get the younger guys in and keep them in and continue to develop them um, and, uh, and to serve the, the greater purpose. Sometimes you gotta, you, you got to sit and watch, and, and kids like him understand it. So when you have a kid like Drew Newmeyer that just gets it and puts the team always before himself, um, the other guys that are in and out are, have, have followed suit, and, and everybody's handling it really well. Obviously, success helps that as well. I'm guessing once you're winning, the guys uh, tend to bond a little closer than they would if you were losing. But yeah, but you guys are uh, are pretty solid all the way through. I'm sure the same thing with the goaltenders, correct? Yeah, you know, the goalies all support each other. Um, if you look at minutes played, it's 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 eerie how how even it is. They're all at right at about 400 minutes played, um, and that wasn't really by design. It's just kind of how it played out. Um, you know, Pash played really well. Uh, Dax didn't play and 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 I think it was five games and I, I knew I had to get him in and right. I wanted to get him a win and um, so he went against AIC and got a win and then and then Rob I think garnered a, a start against UMass because his last start out he he let in a goal against RPI and 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 we didn't score for him right. um, so if we had we have many run support there we would have won that game and uh, and he played too well on Friday to take out he he put two really good back to back wins together for us. So we got all three guys, I think, going right now. Pash is coming off a, a two-on-one spurt. Rob went two and zero. Dax is coming off a win. So I think their heads are in the right place. But what's really cool about those three is they support each other so well, um, you know, and, and and are as happy for the other guys if they were in net after we win. So it's good to see. What's really unique about that too is, and I'm sure you've gone through this bringing them in here. Is you got Dak, obviously, who is a, a draft choice of uh, of the Ottawa. And then you got a senior in Rob, right? Mm-hmm. And then you got Pash. So you got three really different personalities, yep. different levels of play, but they all seem to be putting themselves in one level of play right now, aren't they? Yeah, they are. It, it's it's their cohesive unit, and uh, we're really proud of the three of them. They they've come together, and uh, and and all three can can look at themselves in the mirror and know that they're um, the catalyst for this 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 you know good stretch that we're on one in five or seven games they've all been a part of it so let's talk a little bit about the desert classic coming up now you guys are home you're gonna go up to prescott valley and and host uh, three pretty good teams coming in right yeah yeah good good programs brown obviously um is, is a very long-standing traditional program that we've never played and we're excited to play them and then yukon and st cloud you know uh st cloud's obviously a really good program with tons of good players and yukon's having a great year um, they're going to be without their 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 big time forward Tage Thompson. He'll be playing at the World Juniors, but right. um, and then obviously St. Cloud will be without uh, Bob Moscow, who's who's coaching the World Junior team. So, right. um, so you know, it'll be fun. It'll be interesting, and uh, if we can play like we've been playing, then then uh, we'll give ourselves a chance. And just to familiarize everybody, being the second year of the uh, event. UConn's the only returning team besides you guys, correct? Yeah, they are. They wanted to come back, and, and we have a great relationship with them, and Cavs been good to us, and um, we'll go back and, and return the favor and play them again out in UConn. And, um, but they enjoyed it enough last year that they wanted to come back, so we're, we're grateful for that. So we got that coming on, then we're going to start the new year, and you guys uh, doesn't get any easier, does it, going to Denver, going, going to Ohio State, hmm. some of the teams you got even coming here. I mean, it's uh, it's a grind every week. Yep, it is. It is. We're going to end the the season on a tough note. You know, we have uh, trips to uh, Denver and Ohio State, and then Western Michigan and Quinnipiac, um, and then we actually go to to play the the national development program, the right. U18s. So uh, some some really tough tough games. But again, I think everything this team has experienced, the uh, really the brunt of everybody's back next year, and we had a great class on top of it. Um, we're, we're, we're all about just drawing from every experience that we have and encounter, whether it be positive or negative, and, and growing from it. And you can see that this team's already doing that and applying it to this year. So, you know, we're, we're going to apply everything that we learned over these past seven successful games and, 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 and what we'll learn moving forward, and, and it will be applied the next season. I think people will see big-time progress. That was going to be my next question. 
as a coach now building in your third year, basically, um, tell me a little bit about how that is to develop, to, to fill the needs of what you're going to need to be uh, better every year. How do you look at it when you're recruiting guys? Are there certain areas? Are you just looking for the best players, or how do you go about that? No, we're, try we're trying to build you know, the best roster overall team and program that we can. We, we don't want to be a program that just collects players. Right. Um, so you know, we don't want to have, have a roster full of 27 of the same guy. Yeah. Um, so you know, I think a lot of it is, is wait and see and see what we need. And um, you know, we have some definitive needs being addressed with what we, we're bringing in next year. Um, and we'll continue to do that. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a wait and see game. And you certainly have some, some kids committed for years out down the right. road. But um, as far as next year and the year after go, we, we, we've saved some room and have some flexibility to, to go get players if we think we need them. And we'll continue to approach it that way. As you look at your roster this year and the guys that are potentially leaving, we know Robbie's going to be gone with his eligibility up and, and Rob Levin also, right? Yep. Anybody else that's going to be gone from your program that just has out of eligibility? or Yeah, Drew, Drew Neumeyer is a senior. Oh, yeah, Drew. Um, Ryan Belonger is a senior. So those four will be gone, um, you know, and, and we'll miss all of them in some form or fashion, obviously, whether it be, you know, great character guys in the room and, and – guys that push push the other ones in practice or guys like Robbie that um, you know have contributed in, in our leading score and even Rob Levin who right now is is on on paper you know our best goalie right um, you know and his numbers say that so um, and I think the leadership that that Rob Levin gives the quiet leadership the the being a really good teammate the competing harder than everybody, Every day in practice for four years, that kid's competed right. harder than any player that, I, that I've had. And um, that rubs off on guys, you know, and, and, and it makes them want to play really hard for him. And I think that's what you saw at UMass and, and get him wins and send him out um, as successful as, as we possibly can. I know I feel that way. And so we're going to miss all four of them. Um, they all bring something different to the table, right. but uh, they're all very valuable to us. As you look at, at a big-time college hockey program, one of the things you kind of measure things by, I think, is how many guys you end up losing to the NHL. And at some point in time, you're going to be in that position. So mm -hmm. how, how do you look at that when you're recruiting players? Like a guy like Wade Murphy right now, is you can expect probably Wade will be back for one more year? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I, you know, I mean, if, if something happened for him, we'd be happy for him. But we're planning on him being back. Um, I know he doesn't have much school left, so he, he wants to come back and get his degree. And have a big senior season and hopefully right. earn an opportunity. Um, but yeah, that's something we, we, we think that as we continue to grow with the caliber of recruit that we're bringing in, we're, uh, we're kind of hedging our bets and, and planning for, um, like any good yeah. college program <laughs> has to. Um, but but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something we'll have to deal with as it comes, you know? Let's talk two things in the future, and you can tell me as much or as little as you want, but tell me a little bit about, everybody's asking me about what's the potential for the arena situation. Any changes, any updates that you can provide anybody at this point? Not really. You know, you have to go up on the sixth floor and ask those guys, you know. <laughs> it's... Uh, Above your uh, pay grade, is that what you're telling me? Above my pay grade, <laughs> yep, yep. I'll play wherever they tell us to play. Uh -huh. And uh, we're excited about all the possibilities. You know, I know that there's, there's, uh, there's some serious... Um, um, you know, cohesive, you know, you know, inner workings between us and the Coyotes and a lot of synergy. Um, and there has been since day one. There right. has been since day one. I was just at the game with Calgary last night or against Calgary in, in Anthony's box. And it was it was good to catch up with him. And, and uh, there's, a, there's a lot of synergy right now. So we're excited about it. Obviously, that's a big part of the thing. But also is finding a conference. Is, is there any news on and where you guys might go conference wise yet or not yet? We're, we're you know we're working hard on that every day. We really are. Um, and and I think with some of this arena um, uh, kind of happenings, if you will, um, and, and developments, um, the conference thing is going to take shape here probably pretty quick. But um, can't really tip my hat as to which way that's going to lean to. But we're working on it every day. So as you look at that, how important is a conference to actually getting a shot at? Getting into the national tournament. Well, you can get in as an independent. It's just really hard. Yeah. You know, it's it's. I mean, there's no direct line into the tournament. You have to. You almost have to to, to definitively get in, be a top ten team, you right. know, in pairwise, and because you never know what's going to happen in conference tournaments to bump out the bubble team. So, um, you know, we we're, we're going to be in a conference. I, I can tell you that definitively. We will join a conference, and um, I think our our guys 
most importantly, to give them a conference championship to play for, um, a conference tournament to play in every year. It's something just, just a part of college hockey. It's the part of the fabric of college hockey, and it's what kids want, and it's what programs want. It's what our fans deserve, especially as we get a, a venue here on campus, and um, we're excited about it. Awesome, Greg. I appreciate it. Good luck this weekend up at, or next weekend up in uh, Prescott Valley, and keep things rolling into the new year. I will. Thanks.